there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission, one message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, the news program that reports the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us God. I'm Rick Wiles. Welcome to one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. First, a praise report to the goodness and faithfulness of our God and our King. Uh, Donations to True News in October were far below normal as of the third week of the month. But I must glorify our Heavenly Father, and thank our wonderful partners for the outpouring of support that came to True News in the very last week of October. We went from being far behind for the month to breaking all records for True News donations in our 15-year history of broadcasting. And so we exalt the glorious name of Jesus Christ for His faithfulness, and his generosity, and we thank the many people around the world who gave so generously in a very short period of time. Thank you very, very much. Retired U.S. Army General Paul Valley will join me later in the program. I want to ask him whether he thinks Barack Obama is purging the U.S. military of patriots and whether he thinks we're in a communist takeover of this country. First, the news. The Sunday Times of London reported that the mastermind of the bloody Islamic jihadist attack on a hotel in Mumbai, India in 2008 that killed hundreds of people was CIA operative David Headley. Now, the mainstream news media in the USA has not touched this story. This was front page in London Sunday in the Times, but uh, you're not going to hear this on CNN or Fox, MSNBC. You're not going to read it in the Washington Post, the LA Times, the New York Times, or your local newspaper. This story does not exist in the United States of America. Sunday Times reported, however, that the mastermind of the 2008 terrorist attack in Mumbai, India, at the hotel that killed hundreds of people in that city, was CIA operative David Headley. Described as a highly prized counterterrorism asset for the CIA, Headley was used by the CIA to hunt down Osama bin Laden. The Times said CIA operative Headley proposed the Mumbai attack as a way to win the confidence of Lashkari Tiaba, the violent jihadist group in Pakistan connected to al-Qaeda. The Times said Headley visited Mumbai at least seven times to scope out the hotel and other targets and to provide GPS coordinates and supplies to the terrorists. When the Indian government discovered the CIA connection, angry Indian officials accused Headley's American controllers of allowing the plot to move forward in order to safeguard Headley's role in the hunt for Osama bin Laden. The CIA responded that the agency warned India of the impending attack, but the Indian officials were too incompetent to stop it. The authors of a new book about the 2012 presidential election, the book is called Double Down, claim that President Barack Obama, alias Barry Satoro, uh, bragged to White House aides that he is really good at killing people. Dirty Wars book author Jeremy Scahill told NBC News that Barack Obama will go down in history 
as the president who legitimized and systematized a process by which the United States asserts the right to conduct worldwide assassination operations. Think about that. President of the United States talking to aides in the White House, bragging he's really good at killing people. And people think I'm radical, that I'm extreme for saying that we have a narcissistic, pathological, maniac, liar, revolutionary, Marxist, communist, Fuhrer wannabe in the White House. This is one of the most, not one of, this is the most dangerous man ever elected in the United States of America. And as we have been pointing out on this program, he is a cultist. As you, if you heard David Kahn last week, a man who was tracking and investigating um, Jim Jones almost 10 years before the Jonestown massacre, he said on this program that he, he noted in 2006 that the newly elected Senator Barack Obama had all of the, the markings of Jim Jones. And he said that in 2006, he warned people that Barack Obama would lead America to a Jim Jones-like cultural suicide. We have a nut in the White House, a maniac, a madman, and he is a serial killer. The um, White House and the Pentagon and State Department are declining to comment on the Chinese television and newspaper report last week outlining China's plans to launch submarine-based and land-based nuclear missiles into American cities. You would think somebody would talk about it. Well, it didn't get on CNN either, did it? Bill O'Reilly didn't talk about it. You don't hear it in the mainstream news media. The Chinese are talking about nuking the USA. You know, I think they want their trillion dollars back. I just have a feeling they're really ticked off about that trillion dollars. And they're letting the banksters at the Federal Reserve know, if you little weasels steal our trillion dollars, we're going to nuke your cities. And I think they're sending a very clear, unmistakable message to the banksters at the Federal Reserve that they're not playing games. They want their trillion dollars. The uh, Global Times of China, the military-controlled PLA Times, the Communist Party People's Daily, and China Central Television Network published reports, including detailed maps of the United States, giving specific targets of U.S. cities on both the West and East Coast that would be obliterated and a surprise Chinese nuclear attack. The Chinese news media estimated 12 million Americans will be killed on the West Coast and that nuclear radiation will be carried to Chicago. The reports also said that Chinese ICBMs will come over the North Pole and take out New England and the East Coast. U.S. State Department spokeswoman Marie Harf And Pentagon spokeswoman Cynthia Smith both refused to respond to reporters' questions when asked about China's threat to destroy America. The State Department spokeswoman, Harf, referred questions about the nuclear attack plans to the Pentagon spokeswoman, Smith. But the Pentagon spokeswoman, Smith, refused to comment on the referral question That was sent over from the State Department spokesperson, Harf. You got that? Spokeswoman Smith would only say that the Pentagon continues to monitor developments in China very closely. One of President Obama's homeland security advisors has been criticized for saying that the United States is an Islamic country. The Washington Free Beacon reported that Mohammed al Berry a member of the Department of Homeland Security Advisory Committee, tweeted that he considers the United States an Islamic country with an Islamic-compliant constitution. By the way, Mr. Alaberi 
is a strong supporter of the Muslim Brotherhood, as is his boss, Barack Hussein Obama. Well, the United States Senate is poised to vote tonight on a radical bill that will ban employment discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act, known as INDA, appears on the verge of moving towards Senate passage after Nevada Republican Senator Dan Heller endorsed the homosexual rights legislation. Gay rights activists have been attempting to get this bill in the past since uh, the mid-1990s. And it has failed every time. But they now believe that the political climate in America has changed. And this is their day to get in the past. Inda creates special employment privileges for homosexuals, lesbians, bisexuals, cross-dressers, and, of course, transgendered persons. The bill would make it a federal crime for any organization with 15 or more employees to make employment decisions based on a person's actual or perceived sexual orientation or gender identity. So employers are going to have to understand what an employee's perceived sexual orientation is. The act provides federal protection to cross-dressers. ENDA mandates that U.S. employers permit men to dress as women at work and women to dress as men at work as long as, now this is where the common sense comes in, as long as they adhere to reasonable dress and grooming standards. You don't want any, you know, crazy, flaky cross-dressers, drag queens at the office. They're going to have to be well-groomed. You know, the, the, uh, you know, the guys are going to have to, their wigs are going to have to be uh, properly fitted, and um, they're going to have to have the right High heels on. This is for real. This is what the U.S. Senate is going to do. Do you have any wonder? Do you have any question why God is going to allow the Chinese to nuke this this country? Is there any question in your mind? The country has gone insane. The nation has gone insane. The leaders are insane. We have a serial killer in the White House, a pathological liar, a narcissistic maniac who brags that he likes killing people. He's good at killing people. This is the man in the White House. In the Senate, they're nothing more than a bunch of Roman senators rubber stamping the the um, immorality of the nation going along with, with the immoral beliefs of this nation that is now in direct opposition to God. And here we have we have the, the public knowledge that Chinese television, Chinese newspapers, are actually publishing the maps showing the cities that will be nuked. And yet America's leaders are going to pass tonight a bill that gives federal protection to cross-dressers. We deserve to be nuked as a nation. We've lost all right to be in this country anymore. We have turned against the one true living God. And we have, no, we have nothing to stand on, do we, as a nation, as a country. We've turned against the God who made this nation great. And so... We've told God to get out of the country. We don't want him in here anymore. We don't want his laws. We don't want his book. We don't want his son, Jesus Christ. We don't want his Holy Spirit. And so he's leaving. Now, he's not going to leave you and me because we're born again. He's not going to leave us individually, but he's leaving the country. And he's letting us be turned into a nation of reprobates. And the country is moving at a rapid speed towards obliteration. 
and all the warning signs are there, but few people are paying attention to it. It's it's bizarre. It's weird. It's strange. This is like a sci-fi movie. I mean, it's look, folks. When it, when it gets to the point that the Chinese media is publishing articles showing maps where which cities are going to be wiped out, it's over, folks. It's over. When it reaches that point, it's over. And all these conservatives and Republicans and Tea Party people and patriots, you know, who are trying to save the Constitution, save the country, turn to Republican, yet they they have nothing to say about God. Oh, they pay lip service to God. Oh, yes, 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 God, yes, God and country. We love God and country. God, country, guns, and the Constitution. But it's just lip service. There's no repentance. There's no sorrow in their heart for the sins of this nation. I was reading today about a Texas abortionist who is murdering babies that have been born. Not just going into the womb and taking and killing the babies in the womb. He's, he's murdering the babies that come out of the womb and calling it abortion. Twisting their necks Snapping their spinal cords. Infants. This is America. This is Babylon. It's wicked. It's evil. It's disgusting. And God is going to burn it to the ground. He's going to burn it to the ground. And you better make sure that your soul is right with God. I don't know what else to tell you. You better make sure that your soul is right with God. Because this fire is coming. There's a mighty fire coming. There's a fire coming that's going to singe this nation. And it's coming soon. I'm kind of going off my uh, plans here. Or what I was going to say, but I just feel the anointing right now to go this direction. Um, back in 1933, uh, there was a young preacher. His name was William Brannan. Now, before some of you send me emails and say, oh, Rick, don't you know about William Brannan? I, say, I already know all this stuff, all right? I know more than you think. I'm not as dumb as you think I am, all right? Um, you know, there's some people say, well, William Brannan, when, you know, he, he got squirrely in his old age and got off into bad doctor. Okay, maybe he did. I don't know. Maybe he did. I'm talking about where where he was at spiritually in 1933, okay? Because people change throughout their life. All right, some people, you know, they're close to God, then they drift away, they get back to God. You know, people have different paths throughout their life. Look at Saul. So anyhow, that said, William Brannan was a pastor. He later became a famous evangelist in, in America in the 40s and 50s. Anyhow, 1933, on Inauguration Day, uh, Franklin Roosevelt was being inaugurated as President of the United States for his first term. This was March, because back then, presidents were inaugurated in March, not January. And William Brannan was preparing to deliver his Sunday morning sermon. He was in his church office, March, it was a Sunday morning of, of March 1933, and the Holy Spirit gave him a vision. And the Holy Spirit showed him seven things that would happen to America. I don't have this vision in front of me, so I'm, I'm taking this off the top of my head from what I recall. You can go online. It, you know, There's a lot of websites out there that have the, the, the vision. So you can find it. Just put William Brannan, 1933 vision. You'll find it. But the Holy Spirit told him in this vision, explain the seven things that he saw. Number one. He said, the man that is being sworn in as your new president, Franklin Roosevelt, will serve four terms. Now, that was unheard of. No president had ever served four terms. So this was, again, uh, uh, March of 1933. Roosevelt was going in for his very first day, let alone four terms. But the Holy Spirit told William Brannan, this new president will serve four terms. And then the Holy Spirit said, number two. The man who is currently leading Italy 
will become a dictator and he will be killed by his own people. Well, that was Mussolini. And Mussolini was hanged. And uh, he came to a very inglorious end. And the Lord taught him that the man running Germany would be a tyrant who would start the Second World War. And that was Adolf Hitler. Again, this was 1933. Nobody was expecting Hitler to start World War II in 1933. Just a few people, maybe Winston Churchill. I don't recall off the top of my head four and five. What I do recall is um, he said uh, one one of the signs would be that people would be driving in egg-shaped cars and being amused with games while traveling down the highway. Does that sound familiar? Think about this. 1933. This pastor, William Brandon, has a vision and he sees people in egg-shaped cars. And while they're going down the highway, people sitting in the cars are being amused with games in the cars. Think about what people were driving in 1933. That was a very, very far-out futuristic vision. But that's what we have today, egg-shaped cars with entertainment centers in the cars, people playing with their their video games, playing with their iPads, playing with all the stuff while they're going down the road, watching video on the screens in the cars. But listen to this. Then he saw that America was ruled by an evil, wicked woman. This was next to last. America was ruled by an evil, wicked woman. And he later said he didn't know if this was a human being that would become president of the United States or a spirit of wickedness, a whore, a babble. He didn't know. He just saw that that America would be ruled by this wicked female. And then the very last thing that he saw was the destruction of the United States of America. He saw the cities burned down. I can't shake this lately, folks. This this Chinese report has stirred something in me that's been there for a long, long time. That's why I'm on the radio. I'm not here to be your newsman. I'm not here to tell you funny stories. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to inform you. I'm here to warn you. That fire is coming. Great fire is coming. And you need to be under the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to be you need to be right with Almighty God. And whether he's going to physically deliver all of us from this fire, I don't know. I don't know. At this point in my life, I, I'm just I'm just doing my best to be obedient to the Lord and to lead as many people to the ark of safety as I can possibly lead. Uh, if the Lord chooses to spare my physical life and, and get me out of here, uh, so be it. If he doesn't, then I will die in Christ, knowing that I did everything that I could to lead as many souls to the cross as possible. But I, I know that um, the Lord will deliver some people. In Ezekiel chapter 6, he said, And I will lay the corpses of the children of Israel before their idols. I will scatter your bones all around your altars. In all your dwelling places, the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate so that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, your idols may be broken and made to cease, your incense altars may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. The slain shall fall in your midst, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now listen to this, verse 8 of chapter 6 of Ezekiel. Yet I will leave a remnant. Now listen to this, because a lot of you are missing this. Because over the years, people write to me, Rick, God's going to leave. he's going to have a remnant here. Listen to what the Word of God says. Yet I will leave a remnant 
so that you may have some who escape the sword among the nations when you are scattered through the countries. Yes, there's going to be a remnant saved out of America, but they're going to be scattered throughout the nations of the world. You're not going to survive the fire that's coming. Verse 9, Then those of you who escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive, because I was crushed by their adulterous heart, which has departed from me, and by their eyes, which play the harlot after their idols, they will loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. And they shall know that I am the Lord. I have not said in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. So yes, there will be a remnant, but the remnant will be scattered among the nations. And they will remember what happened to America. And they will testify to the other nations of what happened to America when it became Babylon and turned from God and became a land of idols, a land of sin, a land of wickedness. And that will be our responsibility in the last days as the remnant of God, not to save the Constitution, not to pull the country back together. No. No, it will be to be a witness in all the nations of the world where we have been scattered to tell them of the judgment of God that's coming, the day of the Lord, the awesome day of the Lord, when Jesus Christ shall come and judge all the nations of the earth and gather the elect to him. That will be our responsibility in the last days after Babylon burns. I'm Rick Wiles. You're listening to True News. I'm going to take a break. Retired General Paul Valley will be here when I come back. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is True News. This is Max McLean. What are some ways to express our gratitude for God's great salvation? Listen to the Bible from Ephesians 5. Be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. From Ephesians 5, listen to the Bible. It's great for the soul. Hear more at radiobible.org. That's radiobible.org. This is True News. We report the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us God. I'm Rick Wiles. If the authors of the new book, Double Down, are correct, we have a serial killer in the White House. Mark Halperin and John uh, Heileman are the authors of the book about the 2012 presidential campaign. Mr. Halperin is the senior political analyst for Time Magazine and MSNBC. His father is Morton Halperin, who served as an aide or advisor to three U.S. presidents, Johnson, Nixon, and Clinton. Morton Halperin is a member of the CFR and is currently a senior advisor to George Soros' Open Society Institute. Mr. Halperin's co-writer of Double Down is John Heileman. He is a journalist for the New York Magazine and has written for The New Yorker, Wired, and The Economist. In Double Down, the authors claim that Mr. O bragged to his White House aides that he is really good at killing people. The comment comment was made while discussing drone strikes. Under Barack Obama, U.S. drone operators began practicing what is known as signature strikes. Targets are chosen based on patterns of suspicious behavior, and the identities of people within the strike zone are not necessarily known to the U.S. drone operator. The Obama administration operates on the rule that all military-age males in a strike zone are automatically combatants. 
Mr. Obama has also perfected what is known as the double tap. U.S. drones strike the same place in quick succession. Oftentimes, first responders at the scene after the first attack are killed in the second attack. Documentary filmmaker Jeremy Scahill told NBC News that Barack Obama will go down in history as the president who legitimized and systematized a process by which the United States asserts the right to conduct assassinations around the world. So apparently, the bloodthirsty Fuhrer loves killing people. In April 2012, the New York Times reported that Barry Sotoro, a.k.a. Barack Obama, oversees a secret kill team of White House security advisors. El Presidente Obama acts as chairman of the secretive committee that nominates and chooses who will be assassinated by the U.S. government. Another pattern that is blatantly obvious is the removal of U.S. generals. In 2013 alone, the MacDaddy has fired at least nine generals and flag officers. Is General Lissonamo Obama consolidating his power by purging the U.S. military of patriots? Retired U.S. Army General Paul Valley is on the telephone. He served 32 years in the U.S. Army, including two combat tours in Vietnam. Fifteen years of his service was in special operations, psychological operations, and civil military operations. He is the co-founder of Stand Up America. The website is StandUpAmericaUS.org. General Valley, an honor to have you back on True News. How are you, sir? I'm fine, Rick. Thank you for having me as a guest today. Yes, sir. Well, before discussing the pattern of relieving generals of their command, I'd like to know your opinion about this report out today that President Obama allegedly bragged that he's really good at killing people. If, If this is true, how does this make you feel that there's a man in the White House who thrives on choosing who will die? Well, I, I think it follows along in his uh, pattern of uh, deception uh, and lies that uh, he seems to have brought uh, to the White House uh, across the board, whether it be Obamacare or Fast and Furious or Benghazi. It's, it's just a sense of uh, uh, a rogue a tyrant that we have in there that thinks he can get away with anything. Now, drones are effective, uh, first used for reconnaissance, as you know, and then they put missiles on them to take out uh, high-value targets. Uh, in areas, and it's a valid weapon system. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, uh, popping a few here and there is not solving this war against radical Islam, as we see what's happening in the uh, Middle East uh, as well as in uh, North Africa. So uh, it's his way of saying, well, I'm a real hero, I'm a warrior, but yet he's got uh, officers uh, in Nevada who fly those drones uh, remotely out of there. And they're uh, they're killing uh, those uh, uh, individuals, high targets. But they're they just procreate over there, you know. They uh, you knock out a few, and they have uh, two more that step in their place. So, anyhow, that seems to be his whole program against radical Islam, which is now extending itself uh, more each day around the world. But is there something creepy about a, a president in the White House who? makes uh, these choices about assassinations like he's choosing uh, the menu for the lunch that day? Well, sure, but now it's ingrained in the system through the uh, Pentagon on down to uh, uh, the Air Force uh, and staff that conducts those uh, missions that uh, they can sit there, they see no faces, they fly a drone over based on intelligence uh, that was gathered on the ground. And as you know, uh, much of our human intelligence on the ground has been broken, so any intel we're getting has got to come through uh, forces on the ground like there in Pakistan. And then, of course, Pakistan com- comes out and charges that uh, we're invading, crossing their borders. Uh, it's an absolute mess. Our whole strategy about what's going on and threats to the United States is, is absolutely broken. We have no solid forward strategy. Uh, on national security at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, let's talk about this um, this uh, ongoing well, removal of high-ranking generals and officers from command. Uh, is is uh, Mr. Obama purging the military? Uh, absolutely. Now, you have to realize there's many facets uh, to this story that uh, I've uh, been quoted on uh, over the last week in a number of different articles 
but basically what is happening and what upsets me is you you do have a purge going on. There's over 125 right now, not only of senior officers, but also of mid-level officers, colonels, majors, uh, even down to sergeants that aren't towing the line and following in with the Obama ideology. Uh, the other part of it, Rick, I think is important. Here we have all the deception, fraud, uh, misrepresentation going on in these hearings uh, about uh, not only Obamacare, again, Fast and Furious, uh, Benghazi, uh, all the way back. But nobody is purged other than this one guy that I can think of in the White House that was uh, removed because of his uh, tweeting. Uh so here you have a double standard. You're purging the military, but yet nobody on the political side is being purged. And that upsets me more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the, the most recent generals who were removed, where there was a general and an admiral uh, several weeks ago uh, who had oversight of, of uh, nuclear missiles. Uh, do, do you know anything about that uh, decision? I don't know the I don't know the details of that. That has not been released uh, out of the Pentagon. As I said uh, before, some officers have been removed from misconduct. Uh, you know, we had the situation with uh, um, General Petraeus, for exa example, and uh, uh, Paula Broadwell, uh, that, uh, you know, these things happen and the misconduct occurs. But I can tell you, I had uh, breakfast with a young uh, lieutenant from the Navy about a month ago. He was just returning to the fleet over in Seattle. And he told me on board the ships, you can't talk about politics, you can't talk about Obama, you can't talk about anything that's guaranteed under our First Amendment. It's like a communist purge of our military that they cannot discuss anything about the government. And the senior officers, if they find it out, uh, they'll actually remove you from a position. A report just came out two weeks ago of an uh, Air Force sergeant whose commander uh, was a, a female, and she was a lesbian. And, of course, he, he made it known that he did not believe in the gay marriage and what was going on of the social engineering uh, in the uh, armed forces. And so he was relieved of his job, which basically meant he was purged out of his job. So it's going all the way up through and all the way down through the ranks. This is very serious, and the morale is very low. And it goes to Obama and his intentions to continue to weaken our military uh, at home and abroad. So do you believe this purge is more, it's based more on ideology than disagreement with his foreign policy objectives? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It is ideology. Uh, is driving the foreign it's, policy. It guides, guides the foreign policy and the policies within the uh, uh, within the Defense Department. So it's all one and the same, and if you don't fall in line with that, you're out. It's interesting that the young uh, officer made the comment that it's like a communist purge, because that's right. exactly what I believe is happening. It is a communist purge, and there's few people that's willing to come out and just say what it is. Well, if you look back at the history of communism uh, uh, in Russia or in China, they always had at each organizational level a propaganda officer and a slash political officer. And those officers were assigned each unit. Even in Vietnam, we saw them down at the Viet Cong uh, company level. And they would be given talks every day that they, uh, there was propaganda supporting the communist regimes and Mao and Stalin and so on and so forth. And if they did not fall in line, they were actually executed purged out of the system. So this is a this is a communist uh, right out of the, the playbook uh, on communism, and that's what they're enforcing in our military. Also within the CIA, uh, we're trying to get uh, hearings now uh, and more subpoenas of what happened in Benghazi. But basically, many of these uh, people that were over in Benghazi have been reassigned. They've had to sign agreements, uh, non-disclosure agreements, that they can't talk and the only way that they're going to be able to come into Congress is by subpoena and by a select committee. So uh, we'll have more information coming out about this uh, in, the, in, the, in the next few days as regards to Benghazi. But it's all tied into this uh, ideology that's coming out of the White House, uh, and we know that uh, it's, uh, it's coordinated, it's well-planned, and we can see it being executed throughout 
all of, of the organizations uh, in Washington, D.C., and then down to our units that are based uh, all over the world. And we're seeing it with this, uh, this ongoing attack on Christians in the military. A- any soldier that, that uh, is openly uh, Christian uh, seems to be targeted right now. And they are being targeted, and you can't even talk. Uh, the Air Force Academy just announced next uh, or last week that they're taking out of their oath under God. So you see the purge goes to Christianity, uh, to anybody that supports any ideology outside of Obama. And this is, uh, this is the true nature of things. Uh, this is what's actually happening on the ground, and we've got to change this. That's why this administration's got to be removed sooner rather than later. Um, do you believe that uh, Barack Obama is, is a Marxist communist revolutionary? Yes, I do. Why did Alinsky, he was trained under it the uh, his whole life uh, even when he was uh, in Hawaii uh, uh, there's all sorts of data to support that uh, he supports uh, global one world uh, type of government uh, he believes in uh, a total uh, state that uh, takes from the rich and gives to the poor uh, he uh, you know he's just uh, if you look at his pattern you look at who his friends are who he hangs out with they're all progressives. And if you say, well, he's a socialist, that's fine, but that's just communist light in, in, my, uh, in my understanding. There seems uh, to be uh, nothing American about him. No, nothing. His values, his behavior, his ideology, it's, it's totally un-American. Absolutely it is. And uh, I, I feel that uh, his administration is conducting treasonous activities, Egypt being a good example, where we uh, have completely turned off an ally over there, along with Saudi Arabia, uh, because of uh, Obama's support of the Muslim Brotherhood and al-Qaeda over there in Egypt. And he's doing the same thing by supporting the wrong people in Syria. So the pattern is there. It's nothing you and I have to make up. The facts speak for themselves, Rick. You, you said this uh, this administration needs to be removed sooner than later. Um, how is that going to be done? Uh, certainly, you're not expecting John Boehner to do something, are you? Uh, no, uh, but the people have to do something. Now, uh, we can force what we call the demand uh, resignations. If the people stand up, uh, just like they did in Egypt and other places, uh, we have the right to do that under the Constitution. Uh, we know impeachment probably won't work because of the structure of Congress. It would be just the same thing like a Clinton. Uh, but it's American people have got to stand up and, and, and require the resignations of Biden, uh, of uh, Obama. Uh, we need a new leader in uh, Congress. Uh, and it should not be John Boehner or Mitch McConnell uh, as Republicans. Uh, the problem we have is with our Constitution now. We don't have a, a, a real way to remove somebody that's inept other than through the impeachment process or uh, demand resignations like they did, as you remember, with Nixon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it appears that we're, we're getting very close to, um, a, you know, a Cairo moment for America, where it's going to take well, I, millions of people right. going out into the streets saying we're not going home until the government leaves. That's right. Exactly right. And many of them should be arrested. They should be put in handcuffs. Uh, I mean, you see the lies just on Obama uh, care at these hearings, uh, but nothing ever happens to the Sibelius, is uh, the rest of them, uh, the head of the CIA, Brennan. Uh, you don't see any how uh, anything happening with uh, uh, the generals who have fallen in line with Obama, like uh, Dempsey and and many of the others. Uh, they're in his camp solidly, so they continue to support the ideology of Obama and a very progressive uh, socialist type of uh, uh, evolution that's going on. And it's, it's been occurred. He said he was going to change America, and that's what he's doing. So uh, well, you, don't have to, um, you don't have to be shy about saying he's following the uh, progressive liberal social uh, uh, pathway here. There's just no doubt about that. And they're using the military to, to uh, train soldiers to view... Uh, conservatives, patriots, Christians as enemies of the nation. Yep, and Janet Napolitano, as you remember, she came out with that in Homeland Security, that these veterans, uh, soldiers coming back uh, uh, from the war zones were a threat to the United States. 
Um, so it's all there. It yes. America, wake up, Rick. America's got to wake up. Well, I, you know, I've been I've been warning the countries, uh, you know, before he got elected, that uh, we you know we had a, a communist revolutionary who was uh, getting ready to go into the White House, and and here we are now, in 2013, and we're deep into the revolution, and I I I don't see I don't see much opposition to this communist takeover. Well, I, again, if you look uh, historically, any revolution has always been uh, developed uh, when the, the society or the people feel a lot of pain. I'm not sure the American people understand or know what's going on completely. I don't think that uh, there's been enough pain yet, uh, but certainly it's going to continue. Just watch the pain under this Obamacare that's going to happen. Hey. So that's why... Uh, uh, things will change when the society and when the people feel enough pain. Then they'll demand they'll be in the streets, just like they did in Egypt. Uh, I mean, with with Obamacare, the man has been proven to be a liar. I mean, you know, you can you can watch the the videos of him uh, over and over and over saying, "If we have Obamacare, you'll be able to keep your plan. You'll be able to keep your doctor." He said it numerous times, and now that. The country is waking up to the fact that that is not true. Mr. Obama simply lies and acts like he never said it. Isn't this a that liberal press says he's misspoke? Yes, but I mean, aren't isn't this a sign of a psychopath, of a mentally ill person? He's a narcissist. Uh, He's uh, that's why he can't relate to people one on one. He's got to have his cover when he goes out, um, and uh, he absolutely is inept. He's corrupt. He's not fit for presidency of the United States, and uh, we've got to demand his resignation as far as I'm concerned. General, what were your thoughts uh, last month when when they had that phony government shutdown? But what were your thoughts regarding the way World War II veterans were treated at the memorial? Well, it was just absolutely terrible, and the way the veterans were even treated in, in the other parts around the country. But you see, that's uh, creating a a, uh, a chaotic situation, and that's right by the co- communist playbook, Saul Alinsky. Create chaos among the people. And, of course, uh, that's what they do. I mean, this is a playbook that was outlined by Saul Alinsky, and if everybody reads it, they'll see the pattern. Do you, do you think that... Uh... The Obamanistas are deliberately trying to provoke the American people to react. Well, there's there's word of that. He's trying to provoke the American people to the point where martial law uh, is uh, executed and announced. And then you get into the, uh, the situation of whether our military will, will turn on our own people or stand by the Constitution. These things are happening. Uh, hopefully they won't. But, uh, you know, you agitate the people enough, they're going to go to the streets, and then that's going to be his excuse for martial law. But he's got to remember that the largest army in the world is the American gun owner. And that's why, uh, you know, our truck drivers, uh, our gun owners, uh, our people uh, have to be aware that we may have to stand up to protect our own people if this administration continues along the lines that they are. Enough is enough. America's time to stand up. We've got to change the country around. That's why these people have to be removed from office. Um, do you think they're going to overplay their hand? Yes, I do. I think they're that dumb and inept that they will, just like they've done in the Middle East. I just read an article, by the way, that's just out today. It's on the Stand Up America website. Uh, but basically, we have no friends or allies anymore. You know, I've just come back from Egypt. I met with General Sisi over there and other... Uh, you did? Uh, Civilian, yeah, just a month ago. I'm the only one that set it up a delegation. Other and, than Kerry. And, and what what did General Sisi? What was his what was his uh, comments to you regarding uh, how the United States has treated his country? Well, he's just terrible, and he uh, he said if America would just look through our eyes rather than trying to look through their eyes to understand what happened over here with the takeover of the Muslim Brotherhood and the fact they were uh, going against the Constitution. Uh, they were closing and uh, basically had uh, bombed over 80 uh, Coptic churches over there. Al Qaeda is the military, uh, one of the military arms of the Muslim Brotherhood. 
And so he said in order to, to avoid civil war, the military had to step in. And uh, uh, they're trying, of course, Morsi uh, this week uh, in, uh, in Cairo. But uh, we cut off their aid. Uh, so now they're going to looking at the Russians to support them because they've got helicopter requirements. They've got air requirements because of the al-Qaeda buildup, uh, not only in the Sinai along the Israeli border there, but also in southern Libya, which is on Egypt's other border, that are supplying arms and trained al-Qaeda into Syria. And here we support the Muslim Brotherhood uh, because they said it was a a democratically uh, uh, elected government. Well, it was, but then they used the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, uh, their ideology, to go forth and start changing everything to become a Sharia state. And the Egypt says, we don't want that. Thirty-three million came out and said, we do not want this, we need to do something about it, and that's when the military stepped in. And, and Mr. Obama was aiding the, the Muslim Brotherhood throughout their, the entire revolution in Egypt. The ambassador there, Jane Patterson, uh, and so that's part of my article. Saudi Arabia helped uh, 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 al-Sisi destroy the Muslim Brotherhood there, at least in part, though they're still active there. Of course, the Muslim Brotherhood emanated out of Egypt. That's where they started back in 1927. So uh, we have a situation there of us turning on our allies. And I can tell you, I was in Syria and Turkey just two months ago. We have no friends anywhere. We have no respect in Europe. We have no respect in China and the Far East. And they look at our government. We're not a superpower anymore, but we're deflating quickly and that uh, nobody is going to be there to help us. And so when you look at the financial markets, you look at uh, what's going on on our borders, this is a travesty. And why should we have to put up with this kind of bad leadership? Is, is Barack Obama a human wrecking ball who is on, is he on a mission to destroy yes. everything? Yes. He, said he, he calls it change, but it's actually ended up in destruction. But he has a whole group and army behind him that are enforcing this. Valerie Jarrett, Brennan at the CIA, Dempsey in the, in the, in the Pentagon. Uh, you look at who he's putting in Homeland Security, a lawyer. Uh, you know, we need lawyers for certain things, but they shouldn't be running our Homeland Security. You need a real soldier in there that can protect our borders. Uh, they're totally inept. They're totally corrupt. So, uh, how long will we uh, keep up? But but uh, but are you know? are they inept? I think they may be extremely. Yeah. I don't know if they are inept. I think they're extremely. Yeah, they're inept. But they're very effective in carrying out their plan to destroy the country. That's right. Uh, but yet, everything they do uh, turns to sour grapes. Nothing works. So that that's ineptness. Mm-hmm. They think they're smart. They you know, and a lot of them are very well educated. But they are completely inept in, in running this U.S. government today. Uh, very few people in the U.S. Uh, ha- in the media have talked about Saudi Arabia's threat several weeks ago to sever diplomatic relations with the United States. Right. Uh, Prince uh, Bandar S- uh, Ben Sultan said that there's going to be a major uh, change, a shift in its in Saudi Arabia's relationship with the United States, and that this would have yeah. profound impact on oil. And weapons, it's very obvious what he's talking about. He's talking about the petrodollar. You got it. And this goes back to 1973. And, you know, the the deal that Nixon and Kissinger cut with uh, Saudi Arabia in 73, it it bought the United States about another 40-some years uh, of existence uh, after they went off the, the, the gold standard. But it's coming to an end. Well, that's true. Uh, I would recommend the your audience, if they can get it on YouTube, is the recent talk, about an hour, of David Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. David, David just gave a talk in the United States. I watched it yesterday. He capsules and put into proper perspective what's happening in the Middle East better than anybody, other than myself and my team that's been over there uh, four times in the last year. Uh, and understanding the chessboard and the Russian players, the Iranian players with Syria. It's all a chessboard. And if you don't understand that chessboard, you don't understand the Middle East. So I highly recommend you pull that up, Rick. Uh, David okay. Jeremiah. Oh, absolutely. Pastor Jeremiah. 
Well, General, I know you have to go. I appreciate you being on True News. My guest today, retired U.S. Army General Paul Vallely. I appreciate your having me on, and we'll look forward to doing it again. Yes, sir, General. Appreciate having you here. Thank you, Rick. You heard it here on True News. General Vallely confirming we have a Marxist communist revolutionary in the White House. This is a Saul Alinsky operation underway right now in the USA, and time is running out for the American people to stop this revolution from going any farther. I'm Rick Wiles. You're listening to True News. Let's take a break. I'll be back in a moment. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're listening to True News, the end time newscast. The Bible makes it clear. The time God gives believers must be used to serve Him. Here's today's moment with Charles Stanley. To become the person God wants you to be and to achieve the things He wants you to achieve in life, one of the things that's very important is the way you utilize your time. Because you see, your time is your life. It's irreversible. You can't go back in time. It's irreplaceable. There's absolutely no substitute. And either we will invest it wisely or we will waste it foolishly. Because you see... Time is a gift from God. And so when you begin to realize the value of time, if you're going to make the most of your life, make the most of your opportunities, then you have to put a value on time. You have to recognize how very important that is. And it is certainly the will of the Lord that you and I live our lives outright and we make the most of our time. Now, when he says here, take advantage of every opportunity. Make the most of the opportunities God has given you. Don't waste your time. And so when we think about how we reach our potential, how we become the persons God wants us to be, achieve the things he wants us to achieve in life, it's very evident that a balanced schedule is essential to making that happen. We're driven oftentimes by the clock, and the second hand, as much as oftentimes the minute hand, we live in this kind of a pressurized society. Well, we have to be very careful that we govern our time, that we use it wisely, or we'll never reach the potential God has for us, never achieve those things that he has in mind. Well, let's close tonight's program with a reading from Philippians 3. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the call of God in Jesus Christ. I'm Rick Wiles. Press on, my friend. We have a job to do. Carry on.